Hey up everyone, are you ready for what the fuck is going on? Right, so what we got in today's show for you? Well, looking through my notes, it seems like basically the entire show is about everything that the Tories are doing wrong, all the kind of shit that they've done. Fucking, I can't believe just how one party can be so incompetent, do you know what I mean? Just like everything. Right, I wrote a tweet out, I basically could run out of space. Right? It's that, that amount of shit that's going on with Tories. This is in one day, right? in one day. Well, actually, no, it's not. There's a couple that have run. And I've covered, uh, we've covered a lot, of the, a lot of these in the last show. But basically, from the Tories, so far we've had three candidates have had to resign over rape, right? Over rape. Then we've had fake newspapers that they've been producing, fake interviews that they've set up, fake swastikas that have appeared on things that weren't there before, fake death threats, and then we've got the evidence that they're going to sell off the NHS, and then, what I'm going to go through, Boris hates the single mothers, working class Muslims, and then we've had a resignation over anti-Semitism. That's in the last couple of days. That's whatever... Whatever, do you want to win this election or not? Because you just seem to be acting like somebody who's trying to ruin your chances of winning any kind of elections. But whatever, we'll get on to the Tories, we'll get on to the Tories. But we're starting off with Iraq, right? Riot news, yeah, it's all kicking off in Iraq. Uh, we've covered this loads, loads of times, so whatever. Just a quick recap, I suppose. It started about 1st of October. And there's a lot of things that they're pissed off about from standard of living, wages, jobs. They're also pissed off with Iran because they think that their government is basically being run by Iran. Because uh, after the Americans left, the Shias took over control of Iraq. Uh, because under Saddam Hussein, the Sunnis were like privileged and like part of the governmental structure and stuff. But the majority of people were Shia. And then so we ended up with the Shia government, which then like allied itself with Iran, and the population feel like Iran's basically running the show and that Iraq's like some kind of puppet government or something. So they're pretty pissed off at that. Last week they just burnt down the consulate of Iran. Right, so it started off just as all these things do, it's just um, basically a peaceful demonstration in Baghdad. And then the state sent in the riot cops, so we had a riot. That all kicked off, and then they fucking started sending military in. Military are like riding cars into fucking crowds of people, knocking them all over and stuff like this. So the Iraqis were not having it, they weren't having it, they start fighting back. So they basically, they basically at the moment, they've, they've shut down the government, right? Basically the government all exists within this particular square, I think it's called Tahir Square. Um, there's two approach bridges to this. The, the protesters have shut down the bridges. They've put up these massive steel fucking barriers that they've been welding together. They're not fucking about, do you know what I mean? They're not fucking about making barricades with just shit they can find. They're actually building these things, right? They've blocked all the roads off, blocked all the bridges off. And they've got these awesome signs that they put up that says, the, or, the, the road has been closed by order of the people. <laughs> That's a quality phrase that they've used there. So basically, they've, they've shut all the roads off so nobody can get into the parliament structure. No, that's where all the officers and civil servants and stuff are. It's all been shut down. So government can't function, right? And then they've like commandeered this massive building, turned that into their own parliament. And they've got people coming there and they're, having, they're basically setting up a dual power structure thing here that's going on, right? Down in the south, you know, in Basra, they've like taken over the port down there, which is the main way that like Iraq sells its oil. Do you know what I mean? Get them all on tankers down there and sell it. It's all been shut down. They've taken over that. There's one bridge that goes into the port. That's been shut down. Massive metal barriers and stuff like this. The people have just taken over the country. The state sent the military out, but all roads and everything are blocked, so the military can't really like, really, like, patrol the streets and stuff, and, like, the, pe the people are getting more in control of that. So, like, Iran shut down the internet, closed all the newspapers, so the people set up their own newspaper, they've now got their own newspaper called Tok Tok, which they've named after these three-wheeler things that they've been using. 
to like get protesters who were injured out to go back to medical stuff and to like transport things. They've been using these three wheeler things, so they named their newspaper after it. Tuk Tuk, I think it's quite cool. To be honest, right, so, so that's kind of the situation is basically there's like a pro or revolution going on in this country, right? That they've moved from talking about wages and jobs to let's get rid of government. They've shut the whole government structure down, can't function. They've set up some kind of alternative power structure. They've taken control of the streets. They've taken control of the ports. They've also taken control of the oil fields. It's like all the oil fields, right? All of them have been blocked off, so none of the oil can get out. It's costing the country billions and billions of pounds, right? So basically, we've had 350 people who've been killed. We've had thousands who've been injured where they're driving fucking jeeps into just crashing into people, man. It's fucking sick. How the hell can you do that, man? Whatever's just indiscriminate. But thousands of people have been injured. Loads of people have been shot. 350 people are dead. So, what happens? The Prime Minister has just resigned, right? So, whatever. So, whatever. Bring down the government. Yep, yeah, you've got rid of the Prime Minister. Let's carry on, carry on. So this is very interesting what's happening in Iraq. It's not getting very much press in the West about what's happening. I'm having to read blogs and stuff from people who are there. That's where I'm getting my information from and stuff. Uh, I've had a read of that Tok Tok. It's pretty good. It's pretty militant. They're talking about fighting back in this newspaper. I mean, it's not trying to be like an impartial thing. It's quite clearly it's, it's written by the protesters and stuff. Do you know what I mean? I'm um, not quite sure what the kind of politics is, do you know, are they like Leninists, Marxists, anarchists, just making the shit up themselves, don't really know how that's working, there's not really much coming out about that, but it's all very interesting, the people are not fucking having it, they're fighting back, come on Iraq, get rid of your fucking government. Right, so in riot news, more riot news, the fucking world's on fire. So this is a bit of sad news, really, from Hong Kong. So for months we've been having riots in the streets, and it took on a rather different thing when the rioters got uh, made connections with like the students, and they took over the university campuses and stuff. Um, they basically barricaded themselves in there, they're using bows and arrows, loads of Molotovs, shit like that. Um, but, but the violence, the level of violence from the state towards them, they were attacking children, shooting tear gas at kids and stuff, has put a lot of people off, really. There's a lot of people, and, it, and the numbers there dwindled and dwindled and dwindled until there was about 300 of them left from maybe about four or 5,000 that were there initially. There's only about 300 of them left. But a lot of them didn't want to leave because they were scared of getting arrested because if they got done for rioting, it's got like a ridiculously draconian prison sentence for that. So a lot of them didn't want to have that. So, so the cops told them that if they came out, they won't be arrested, right? So that they agreed to that. They came out and then they arrested them, right? So they've all been arrested, all these people in there looking at fucking decades in prison and stuff. So it's all a bit fucking sad, it's all a bit shitty, to be honest. So basically, the whole uh, university occupation thing's ended now. But basically what's happened is it's just gone back to the streets, so they're back rioting on the streets again now. It's not, the, the whole thing's not ended, it's just that little part of it. But that little part of it was quite interesting because they were carving out an area for themselves. That's what you do in revolutions, you liberate zones, do you know what I mean? And that's what they've done, but it's been smashed just by the violence of the fucking, the police and stuff. So it's a bit sad. But anyway, right, so they've been in, the cops have been in now, they've taken over control at university. And what they found was 4,000 Molotovs. <laughs> Quality. 4,000 Molotovs, 1,300 bombs. These are those pipe bombs that they made that I've told you about. Uh, 1,300 pipe bombs, <laughs> whatever, it's like a fucking world war or something. They found 500 bows and arrows and over 10,000 arrows, because I told you about them, they had like, like a little factory and everybody was making arrows for the bow and arrow, they had 10,000 of them, so they were well stocked up for a fight. It's just, this is what happens sometimes, you know what I mean? People, you don't know how you're going to react when you're faced with violence, like... 
stay organized, orchestrated violence, you don't know how you're going to react. Do you know what I mean? I, like on my Life in Riots um, series that I've done, and scroll down, find them, whatever. I'll find them on my Twitter page or whatever. Um, in there, I've told you what it's like when you're rioting and stuff and cops are coming and you're fighting and shit like that. Like, whatever, I've always fought back, but I'm not, you know, I've been with, like, activists who fought, like, basically, in Genoa, again, I've, I've done this in the Life of Riots series. Like, in Genoa, I got put through a fucking mock execution. I literally thought they were going to kill me, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They tortured me. Yeah, and lots of activists who were moving me on the day who went through the same thing, were like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that shit again. And they dropped out of politics. It just made me more angry. I hate, it just made me hate them more. Do you know what I mean? But I've seen activists have to pull out because of violence. It's, it's quite common, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not nice, violence. It's not, like, I'm... Like, I'd say, to, I'm, I'd say I'm not a violent person, but, like, in, when I need to be violent, I can be violent, do you know what I mean? And I'm trained in martial arts and stuff like that. Um, but, like, not everybody's up for violence. And, vi and, like, the thing is, like, even when I'm violent and I've used violence, I often throw up afterwards, right? Because it's not right nice, let's face it. But anyhow, they've, they've had to give up the universities due to violence of the state. So it's all a bit sad. But they're still fighting back. They're still in the streets. They're still rioting. They've still got the little community behind them. Everything's still... They're still fighting back. Do you know what I mean? It's not that. It's not over. It's not over. It's just that one little bit of it that's over. So, that's what's that sound. Right. So, Boris! What shit's been coming out of that knobhead's mouth? This guy, man. This guy. I've got loads of examples of just... You just go, why would you even say this? Man, right, so basically it's just a quote from him. But he comes out and he says, the working class, right, so the majority of people in this country, the majority of the electorate who you want to vote for you, yes, those people, what, what have you got to say about them, Boris? Oh, well, he says, yeah, the working class, they get their drunk and they're criminals, they're aimless, they're feckless, they're feckless and hopeless. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for that. I'm glad you've pointed that out about me. Whatever, you knobhead. Come and say that to my face. Come and say that to my face about the working class. So that's him. That's what he thinks of us. That's what he thinks of when he thinks of working class people. Drunk criminals who are aimless, feckless and hopeless. Whatever, dickhead. Whatever. We're the majority, you knobhead. And you just say shit like that. Whatever. Do you want to lose or what? Because whatever. You've just now said to ev just about everybody in this country that you fucking hate them. Do you know what I mean? What, how else are we supposed to read this? You're just talking about me. You're talking about my family. You're talking about my kids. Do you know what I mean? Right, how am I supposed to take this, right? You think I'm a criminal and I'm feckless? Whatever. Go fuck yourself, Boris. Go fuck yourself. Right, so, right, so, so if that's not bad enough, do you know what I mean, right, so whatever, so, fucking, Theresa May, right, whatever, ex-Prime Minister, no bad, right, so, so what's she been up to, oh, she's been unveiling statues, statues, yeah, you know, statues, you just put those up to people who you admire or who you think are great or whatever, yeah, 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 and she's put up to Lady Astor, who happened to be Hitler's woman in Britain, that's how she was described. She's a rampant anti-Semite, a rampant fascist who supported Hitler and wanted Hitler to invade Britain. Are you putting up a fucking statue to this woman? Whatever, whatever. I mean, who does that? Why is she even getting a statue, right? But not only that, the ex-Prime Minister is there to unveil the statue. Fantastic, fantastic. So not only do the Tories clearly hate the working class, but they honour fascists. Excellent. I think they should be our government, don't you? Fuck off. Fucking Lady Astor. Whatever, whatever. Right, so whatever, what was shit have the Tories been up to? Right, so this knobhead, right? So this guy... Simon Hart, right? So he's a fucking candidate for the Tories in this election, yeah, right? So basically, he, he, ages ago, right, he had, like, um, some election stuff that somebody had, like, marker penned a load of, like, shit, like, whatever, like, shitty things to him. I can't remember what, exactly what it said now, but... Do you know what I mean? Somebody had put something on his, his, like, election poster thing. They'd written some shit, yeah? 
And he's been in papers and stuff. Then, then, yet, then, then this week he's been posting it out on Twitter as if it's new, right? But it's not new. It's months. It's months ago. But now, suddenly, he's got a swastika sticker on it when he didn't have a swastika sticker on it before, right? The nobbits forgot that it's already been photographed before. He's clearly added this swastika sticker to it, right? So, so he's been caught out about that, yeah, whatever. So, whatever. So now he's had to resign. This is about. This must be about eight or nine candidates for the Tory party who've had to step down for one thing or another, for anti-Semitism, fucking whatever, faking shit, lying about shit, rape, whatever, fake newspapers, fake interviews, whatever, right, whatever, these are things people are having to return. Where are they getting their candidates from? Where are they, where are you getting these people from? Like, whatever, how can a party, like, have so many people having to resign because they're so terrible? Where are you getting your fucking candidates from, right? Clearly. No other party's doing this. <laughs> well, that's like Liberal Democrats are up to some shit as well. We'll get to that in a minute. But whatever, whatever, who are these people? Why are you fucking picking them to fucking... Like, represent you and want you to, to get into Parliament, <laughs> putting small stickers up that they weren't there before. Clearly done that. Yeah, whatever, not bad. Fuck me. Right, so, so, like I've said before, social media is where the whole fucking, uh, the whole, like, um, election campaign is taking place, do you know what I mean? This is where people are arguing about politics, this is where both sides are clashing and stuff, do you know what I mean? Um, and so, like, whoever wins the social media war will probably win the election, right? And whatever, I've shown you examples and stuff of what Labour are up to. They're a million times better at this shit than Tories are. Tories are proper crap, proper crap. Uh, whereas Labour just produced some really slick fucking videos and whatever and and Jeremy Corbyn's tweets are awesome he totally knows how to use the medium do you know what I mean and he uses it really really well with a mixture of videos and stuff that he puts into his, his tweets and even when he's responding to he's just really good at it he's really good at it do you know what I mean and so anyhow uh you can get lists of like how the how the different candidates are doing and stuff like in terms of like gaining followers so today's came out, Corbyn, his follow his Twitter following has gone up by 6,283. And uh, Boris, he hadn't lost followers this time. Last time I gave it numbers, he lost followers. <laughs> he's actually gained some. Well done, Boris. But he's only gained 1,000. So that's 5,000 less than what Jeremy Corbyn's got. Do you know what I mean? That's massive. It's massive. And Jeremy Corbyn's got a million more followers than what Boris Johnson has on Twitter, right? So whatever, Labour are clearly winning social media battles, you know what I mean? Clearly. And if you're following it, do you know what I mean? You can see it, you can see who's doing better at this. It's clearly not the fucking Tories, that's for sure, right? So another fucking shit thing Tories have done, right? Somebody's had to resign over this. Right, so basically, this week, we just had a major fucking terrorist attack happened in London, do you know what I mean? Some knobhead fucking stabbing people. Basically, cops turn up. Guy's on floor. They fucking execute him. <laughs> the, the, he, the guy was on the floor, right? He wasn't doing anything. He couldn't have done anything to anybody else. They just shot him, dead, killed him. Videos of this. Comes out on Twitter, whatever. Whatever. So now we've got police... Going around fucking executing people in the middle of the street. <laughs> and everybody's fine with this. I'm not fine with this. Get rid of the fucking police. Whatever. Stop arming these cunts. Anyhow, right? So the Tories, the Tories, at this point, when the country's in a crisis, we've just had a massive terrorist attack. That's all everybody's talking about. Cops are going around executing people. Right? In the middle of this, the Tories create a fake tweet from Jeremy Corbyn that says, a man was murdered by the police today in London, right? Yeah, whatever, right? So whatever, I've got that, I, if, if, if Jeremy had said that, I'd have been fine with that because that's what happened. The police did just murder somebody, yeah? 
But, you know, the chattering classes, they're not, oh, they're not saying police murdered somebody or whatever. They're giving all, all kinds of reasons why it was perfectly okay for police to execute somebody in the street, whatever. So whatever that, if, if Jeremy Corbyn had said that, then they'd think that'd be a negative thing. But he never said that, right? He did not send that tweet out. But the Tories created this fake tweet and have been spreading it all over Twitter, right? Whatever. Whatever. Go look at his timeline. He never said that. So another fucking thing that they've done, another fucking shitty thing that the Tories have been up to, man, it's just, it's just this catalogue of disasters for the Tories. And yet the polls are telling us that they're six points ahead, <laughs> whatever, whatever. There's no way people, anybody who's looking at this election and seeing the things that I'm telling you about what the Tories are, is anybody looking at this and going, oh yeah, they seem like the people I want to run this country, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Boris just lies, he just makes things up. And that's Tory party, everything's fake, fake interviews, fake newspapers, fake fucking swat stickers. Just everything's fake, do you know what I mean? And they're trying to pass this off as if it's reality, and I've got fake tweets trying to put words in Jeremy Cotton, whatever. I've never seen such dirty fucking tactics before in, in an election, it's pretty fucking horrific, man. It's pretty fucking horrific. If you had any illusions about democracy, then this election just shattered every one of them, do you know what I mean? Never seen a political party act like this, man. It's crazy, it's beyond crazy, it's beyond crazy. So, um, so yeah, um, the, um, so, so yesterday there was, a, there was, Jeremy Corbyn was in Leeds, and he'd come to give a speech, and like, just look at this, right? This is all the fucking people waiting outside, right? Just hang on. Let me get out of here. Look at all these people here, yeah? And it's like, it's like minus two, it's fucking freezing cold outside. Look at all these fucking people. Look at them all, all stood in fucking freezing cold weather. Just waiting to see fucking Jeremy Corbyn. Whatever, man. He's like a fucking pop star, isn't he? He's, he's like a pop star. When he did that thing at Glastonbury, or some music festival thing, you've got thousands of people shouting, Oh, Jeremy Corbyn. I've never seen a politician like this guy, man. I've never seen him invigorate, a politician invigorate as many people as he does. Do you know what I mean? Like, all these people who've, like, registered to vote and stuff, hundreds of thousands of people, they're all coming out because it's Jeremy Corbyn saying this. Everywhere he goes, there's just thousands of people there. Like, even when he's just turning up at, like, an interview or something. So, basically, he's getting out of a car and walking into a into a recording studio just for that small period where he walks through. There's thousands of people there waiting to see him. Do you know what I mean? It's like he's a pop star. It literally is like he's a pop star. You've got all these young people there shouting his name and stuff. You're like, whatever, he's a politician. You're not supposed to do that for politicians. Or whatever. Jeremy does. Jeremy does. So, Tories! What have they been up to? <laughs> we haven't heard from Tories for a few seconds. Shit, they've been up to. Yeah, well, two, two Tories now. Two of them. Two of them got in, in on this that act. They thought... Let's go on to social media and be anti-Semitic. Yeah, whatever. There's 250 fucking million people on Twitter. Did you think we wouldn't notice you being anti-Semitic? Do you know what I mean? So he's not, mate. They've been anti-Semitic on Twitter and everybody's found out about it. Massive uproar about that. So they've had to resign. <laughs> whatever. There's not going to be anybody left in the Tory party by this, is there? Whatever. <coughs> so, yeah. So it's another two of them. They've had to fucking go... Holocaust denial, that's what it was. Anti-Semitism and denying that the Holocaust happened. And these are people you want to stand for election to go and become our government. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Where are you getting these people from, Tories, man? Fucking crazy. So in riot news, where else is up in flames, right? So this is a country that we don't really get an amazing amount of information about what's happening within it. I'm talking about China, right? So we've got... Massive communist dictatorship going on there. Everything's controlled. Information's controlled and stuff. But reports are coming out of this massive fucking riot that happened in Guangdong. Um, it's a kind of weird reason as to why this has happened. 
Basically, they're wanting to build a crematorium and the locals are not happy about it. So they had a mass demo and then the state just massively cracked down on this demo like they do. And then the people just start fighting back and there's these massive riots going on all over this area. Started off in one little town, it's now spread out everywhere. Um, so there's, there's rioting, the police are using tear gas and batons and rubber bullets and they're fighting back with Molotovs. Um, there's been loads of people have been beaten up by the police. We've had 50 arrested and hundreds of them have been injured. So don't really know where that's going to go, but whatever, it's not something you hear of that often about people fighting back against the state in China. So it's quite interesting. It's a bit of a strange reason, a crematorium. But whatever, whatever, whenever people fight back, I'm going to be there supporting them. Do you know what I mean? I don't give a shit what you're fighting back for. I'll just fight back, whatever. Just fucking attack your government. We'll sort out the details later. Do you know what I mean? You know, whatever. So come on, China, fight back. Against these communist dictators. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Right, so another Tory shit. What have I been up to now? What else have I been doing? Right, so Lucy Allen. Yeah? So so she's been she's been on Twitter posting emails that she's apparently got. Only it turns out that this email, right, it's supposed to be from a specific person. The specific person's gone, yeah, I didn't send that, right? I didn't say that. Turns out, she's like, added a death threat to this thing, right? Whatever, whatever. Some woman sends her, sends her an email, so she fuck copies it and adds a death threat to the bottom of it and then posts it on social media and the woman sees it and goes, hang on a minute, I didn't say that. All right, whatever, whatever. So she's been caught out lying and faking shit. It's all the Tories are doing, just lying, making shit up and fucking creating creating alternative realities and passing it off as if it's what's going on. What the fucking hell is happening? What is this? This is supposed to be an election. I don't really understand what's happening, to be honest. Madness, madness going on here. The way the Tory party are behaving, whatever. I swear, if they carry on like this, there's going to be nothing left at Tory party. Who the fuck wants to vote for these people? Do you know what I mean? You have to be insane to want these people to run the country. Whatever, whatever. Can't trust a fucking word at all, he says, man. Whatever. Whatever. So, in riot news, <laughs> we're seeing a theme going on in the world these days. Riots. So, Iran. Right, we've talked about Iran um, before. So, um, so this started off because Iran's like suffering massively under sanctions from the Americans. Like 90% of its GDP of its economy is oil, right? And it's been, it's, it's unable to sell oil. So it's had 90% of its economy just taken away. So they're struggling. They're struggling massively economically. But um, they basically had to, they put up the price of oil and then that put up all the fuel and stuff. And that's what kicks this thing off, right? But it's grown massively, massively since then. <coughs> started off in Tehran it's now in over a hundred different cities and towns that this has spread where people are rioting but they're, they're not just like rioting they're going against symbols of the state so like the state is a Shia Muslim thing they've attacked Shia Muslim monuments there's a big memorial to Khomeini who was like the founder of the of the part of the country as a Shia thing they've set that on fire the whole country's gone up in fucking flames, man. There's been over 140 government buildings that have been burnt down, right? So they're attacking the government and the governmental structures and stuff. Again, the starts of what you do in revolutions. They're just they're smashing this up. Um, there's been over 450 people killed, right? And this has only been going on for a few days, right? Well, maybe about a week, maximum, something like that. 450 people have been shot dead. So they've sent the military in. They're militarising it straight away. But the people are not having it. They're not having it. They're standing up. They're fighting back. They're not taking any shit off these people. Do you know what I mean? So it's all kind of interesting what's going on there. Um, there's been 10,000 people arrested, yeah? And one of the top clerics has said that they're, they're going to go for the death penalty for all these people because they've got the death penalty in Iran. 
So these 10,000 rioters are facing the death penalty, whatever, whatever. So people are not happy about that. Um, we had another another cleric came on and said he's going to cleanse society of the rioters. And this basically sounds like genocide to me. Whatever. What do you mean you're going to cleanse them? Cleanse society? Whatever. So, like, Iran basically is handed over power to the fucking military. The military are patrolling everywhere. There's armoured vehicles, tanks. They've even brought tanks out. I don't know what you're going to use tanks against. What are you going to do? Shoot protesters with tanks? Whatever. But they've got tanks going around the road. Whatever. It's basically just a show of force, I think. Do you know what I mean? Just showing the fucking military force that they've got. The troops everywhere. Massive vehicles. Curfews are in place. Whatever. It's proper kicking off in Iran. And again, we've seen in like next door in Iraq, same shit's going on. If these two can work together, we might see something quite interesting here. Or if the Iranians can learn from what's going on in Iraq, do you know what I mean? Because like, as I've said before, the border between Iraq and Iran basically doesn't exist right now. It's, for all intents and purposes, just one country right now. So there's a lot of mingling and there's like a lot of sheer... Um, what do you call them? Like shrines. There's like shrines in Iraq. So a lot of people from Iran travel to Iraq to go to the Shia shrines and stuff. So there's a lot of intermingling of the populations between Iran and Iraq. And they're all Shia as well. So like whatever. So it's just really interesting. It's really interesting. As always, the state's response has been completely of an overreaction here. I'm just employing masses amounts of fucking violence. 450 people being shot. It's been going on for a couple of months in Iraq and we've only got 300 people who've been shot there but when a fucking whatever a week or something Iran's killed 450 people arrested 10,000 people whatever whatever right so we're gonna end on Boris what's he been saying right so if you remember it's working class thinks they're all a bit feckless and criminals and drunks and stuff so, what does he think about council estates? Eh? Oh, council estates, he says, what they give us is chavs, losers, burglars, and drug addicts. <laughs> nice. I grew up on a council estate. Nice. So he's just, just attacking me and everybody that I grew up with, right? Whatever, whatever. Who lives in council estates? Poor people. So it's clearly him hating the poor people, right? Is there anybody he doesn't like? Is there anybody he actually likes? Because he seems to hate just about fucking everybody. Right, so what else has he had to say? What else has he had to say? Well, according to Boris, economic inequality, yeah, the fact that there's massively rich people and massively poor people, he says that's natural because people who don't earn much money uh, and I've got low intelligence. You fucking what? You fucking what? I live on benefits. I got. I get two one foot top university in this country, mate. Whatever, whatever. Just because I ain't got any money, don't mean say I'm not intelligent. But whatever. Poor people are thick. That's what he's saying, right? It's a great fucking election slogan, that, isn't it? Gr poor people are thick. Vote conservative. Whatever. <laughs> no bad. Whatever. So what else has he had to say, right? Not content with going after the poor. Not content with going after single mothers. Not com com after going after working class and people who live in council houses. Who else has he had to go at, right? Well, Islamophobia, yeah? Hating Muslims. That's natural because the problem is Islam. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. Only 3% of the population are Muslim in this country. I'm sure you'll get loads of votes from those people. What are you doing? What are you doing? Is this what you call an election strategy, right? This is insanity. Why are you behaving like this? Why is your party behaving like this? Why do you think that's going to get you any votes? To me, it just looks like madness. Absolute fucking madness. But whatever, we're going to leave it on that because I ain't got anything else to tell you. I'm sure Boris will fuck up in the next... Five minutes, I'll have a few more for you. Until then, guys, later.